A fatal car accident causes a young Michael Brower to bust his knee while his mother dies on the road. Years later, a teenage Michael wakes up from the nightmare about the accident and checks the scar on his knee. His best friend Kyle calls him to announce an interactive horror game called Brain Scan that claims to be the most frightening experience. Michael thinks it's all just hype, but Kyle insists that the game is interactive, making them feel like they're in the game. However, Michael isn't listening as he notices his neighbor, Kimberly, through the window. He sets up his camera to record her, but Kyle interrupts him, knowing that he's watching Kimberly again. As he looks away, Kimberly takes a peek, knowing that Michael was watching her. Kyle tells Michael to make a move on her soon because a football jock likes her too. After ending the call, Michael watches Kimberly via the video feed. He tells Igor, his voice-activated computer, to call Kimberly, but cancels the call before she picks up. Instead, Michael tells Igor to dial the number on the brain scan ad. Immediately, someone answers the call. The man on the other end claims the game is the most frightening experience anyone will ever have. Michael rolls his eyes, thinking it's just a gimmick. Still, the man explains that brain scan is a game that interfaces with the subconscious, simulating a frightening experience. Michael isn't convinced, but he suddenly gets shocked and starts convulsing. After he recovers, the man decides to let him play brain scan, promising to deliver it soon before ending the call. Aghast, Michael rushes to Igor to redial the number, only to discover the line is no longer available. At school, the horror club watches a film, but Michael doesn't find it entertaining. Suddenly, Mr. Fromberg, the school principal, interrupts their movie. As president of the horror club, Michael gets taken to the principal's office for showing gory scenes. Fromberg lectures him that violence isn't entertainment, but Michael views horror as an escape from reality. Fromberg, however, finds the idea unhealthy, so he bans the club until Michael provides films or video games that the principal will approve. On the way home, Michael stumbles upon a crime scene that reminds him of the car accident when he was younger. Detective Hayden approaches and asks if he knows the victims, but Michael says no, so he's told to go home. Arriving home, Michael clears out the mailbox, scanning through the many letters from his distant father until he finds a package labeled Brain Scan. Curious, Michael inspects the package while listening to his father's voicemail. His father updates him on how business is going and promises to return home in a few days. Awkwardly, he tells his son he loves him, which makes Michael melancholic. That night, a party is hosted next door, so Michael shuts his window to block out the noise. He inserts the game CD into his computer and commands Igor to call the brain scan number while blocking other calls. From her house, Kimberly tries to call Michael to invite him to her party, but her call is blocked. Stacy, Kimberly's friend, tells her to join the party instead. Meanwhile, the game launches with a monster-like face and glowing eyes on the screen. The game warns that it'll program his mind like hypnosis, but Michael just scoffs at this. Suddenly, the game tells him to take this seriously as he'll witness a murder through the killer's eyes and must kill within the allotted time without being caught. The game is the first disc, and if he doesn't win before the time runs out, he can't play the next one, which would become dangerous. With that, Michael begins the game, and it hypnotizes him, altering reality through flashing lights. From a first-person point of view, Michael appears in front of a house and is guided by the game's voice. He enters through the back door, grabs a knife, and heads upstairs. Entering the bedroom, Michael finds a sleeping man with a tattooed foot. As the game encourages him, Michael stabs the man repeatedly. The man wakes up in horror, scrambling for help until he collapses. Confirming that the man is dead, Michael cuts his foot off, and the voice tells him to keep it in a safe place. Michael regains consciousness, thrilled at the intense experience. He peeks at the party through his window and cranks up his music feeling elated. The following day, Michael tells Kyle about his incredible experience with the game. Knowing it's worth the hype, Kyle asks if he could borrow it, but Michael refuses since he wants to play more. At home, Michael inserts the game disc, but the screen goes static. He hears a car drive by and sees Kimberly arriving home. He heads to Kimberly's house and waits for her in their living room. From there, he overhears a local news channel on their TV broadcasting a gruesome murder of a man who was stabbed to death in his bedroom. Seeing the familiar crime scene, Michael excuses himself to leave. In his house, he checks the news and confirms that it's the same man from the game. Recalling the game telling him to keep the man's foot, he checks the freezer and sees the foot inside. Panicked, Michael calls the operator to contact the brain scan number, only to find out their number doesn't exist anymore. Suddenly, the TV turns on and launches brain scan. 
Michael angrily asks what the game did and who killed the man, and the voice tells him he is responsible. The face on screen then starts to morph out of the TV. The monstrous man materializes until he's standing in the room, introducing himself as the trickster. As he checks Michael's things, the trickster reminds the teen that he controlled what happened, so it was his responsibility. Michael refuses to believe this, so the trickster reveals that he was there to witness it. He insists that whether Michael killed in real or unreal life doesn't matter if he doesn't get caught. Michael insists that it doesn't make sense, so the trickster points out his horror movie collection, wondering if the deaths there made sense. Still, the boy asserts that he didn't kill the man since he didn't know him. The trickster, however, comments that since he had no motive, it was primal. The teen refuses to do it again, but the trickster mentions a witness. He notes that he's also a witness, but he'll never turn the boy in, no matter how much he's tortured. To prove his point, the trickster electrocutes himself, breaks his fingers, and plucks out his eyes. Yet he lives. The trickster promises that he's helping him, but he must finish playing all the discs. Suddenly, he vanishes, leaving Michael confused. Afraid of getting caught, Michael goes to a forest to bury the foot. As he digs, a dog appears and takes the foot. He chases after the dog, but due to his injured knee, he loses sight of it. Suddenly, the dog returns, so Michael begs it to return the foot, which it does before leaving. After burying the foot, Michael burns his clothes to destroy the evidence. Kyle drops by, wondering why he skipped school that day. He lies that he's sick, and Kyle asks if he can come in. Michael refuses, so Kyle just asks to borrow the brain scan disc. Instead, his friend demands he stop bothering him about it before shutting the door on his face. Later, Michael wakes up when Kimberly stops by to give him his homework. While they talk, he notices police cars roaming around. Kimberly asks why he visited her house before, so he claims to need help with homework. However, she reminds him that they don't have any classes together, catching him on his lie. Kimberly also hands him his mail and newspaper with a headline about the recent murder. Hiding his nervousness, he goes through the mail and sees another brain scan disc, causing him to panic. So he asks her to leave. Once she's gone, Michael angrily breaks the new brain scan disc. Later that night, the trickster visits Michael again. He tells Michael to play the second disc, but Michael refuses. The trickster asks him what he'll say to the police once he gets interrogated, angering the teen further. Still, the creature insists that the witness will talk so he needs to play. When Michael reveals that he broke the disc, the trickster reveals the item in his hand, fixed and fully functional. Pissed, Michael threatens to give it to the police, and the trickster calls his bluff before vanishing. Knowing he needs more concrete proof, Michael decides to record himself while playing the game. He then starts the game and gets sucked into brain scan. Suddenly, he wakes up, realizing time has passed. Not remembering what happened, he checks the video footage and watches himself start the game, then get up seconds later. Confused, he checks the fridge and finds Kyle's necklace covered in blood. Michael hurriedly calls Kyle, but instead, Hayden picks up the phone. Devastated, Michael ends the call, knowing his best friend is gone. The next morning, Kimberly visits Michael to comfort him about his loss. She reveals that Kyle visited her last night to ask her to sign a petition to save the horror club. Kimberly also mentions that Kyle told her about their fight, so he asked her to bring the petition paper to him instead. Michael mournfully says he misses Kyle, so Kimberly comforts him. Later, he watches the news broadcasting Kyle's death when the trickster appears. He blames him for killing his friend, but the trickster claims Kyle was the witness because he knew things about Michael. Michael. Looking for food, the trickster opens the freezer and sees the evidence. He insists that Kyle's death was required, then asks if Michael actually feels guilty about it. He hints that the desire to kill is inside him and everyone else. The doorbell rings, but the trickster warns him not to answer the door. Still, Michael goes to check, so the trickster just sits back and watches TV. At the door is Hayden with his partner, Sergeant Martin. Inviting them inside, Michael lies that he'd been sick, so he hasn't been in school. Hayden mentions that during their investigation of Kyle's death, his classmates described Michael as frightening, strange, and weird. Martin then shows Michael the newspaper headlines of Kyle's death confirming that he was Michael's only friend. Hayden recognizes his voice as the one who called Kyle the night of the murder, so Michael lies and says it wasn't him. Though unconvinced, the detectives leave. Once they're outside, Hayden mentions how there were fresh ashes in the fireplace despite the hot weather. He's sure that Michael was the one who called that night, so he tells Martin to check with a phone company. Moments later, Michael finds his room trashed as the trickster eats raw chicken. Infuriated, he tells the trickster that the detectives are onto him. The trickster then gets the newspaper and reads a segment about Michael's testimony on his best friend's passing. The teen realizes that Kimberly shared with the press what he said while he was mourning. The trickster reassures him that he wants what Whatever Michael wants. When he copies his and Kyle's handshake, Michael tries to punch him, but the trickster grabs his arm. 
The trickster cuts his hand, and as his blood drips, he reminds the kid about the car crash. Michael immediately pulls away, only to see the wound gone. His spilled blood suddenly transforms into the third brain scan disc, so the trickster tells him to play or forget about everything. He mentions how Michael has thought of killing himself to join his mother. However, just like how he won't finish brain scan, the trickster berates him for being afraid to finish everything, even when it's about taking his own life. He lists down all that Michael won't stand up for, including Kimberly and his father, who always leaves him. The trickster asserts that he's trying to help Michael, so the troubled kid asks how. The trickster tells him to play the third disc, which only requires him to get rid of a clue without killing anyone. However, Michael thinks it's a trick. Still, the trickster disappears, transferring to the TV. Reconsidering, Michael asks what the clue is. Before he reveals it, the trickster forces Michael to claim that they're friends, which he accepts. He then hints that Michael left footprints in the mud, but he warns that if time runs out, it's game over. Later, Michael and Kimberly make out on the bed. She gets on top of him but chokes him as she's replaced by the man he killed. Screaming in terror, Michael wakes up from his nightmare. Hayden spies at a distance while Kimberly calls out to Michael, hoping to talk. However, Michael just throws a newspaper out in response. Kimberly desperately claims that Stacy was the one who shared his testimony with the press, but he turns up the music to ignore her. While the kid is distracted, Hayden sneaks inside the house to collect the ashes from the fireplace. That night, Hayden gathers volunteers and police officers for a neighborhood watch to prevent further murders. Meanwhile, Michael starts the game and goes to Kyle's house to remove his footprints. In the house, Martin receives a call from the trickster, who tells him that there's an intruder. Hearing this, Michael flees, but Martin spots him and gives chase. In the woods, Michael barely dodges the volunteers. While making his escape, an officer approaches, so he hides under the bushes until he leaves. Michael hides at a construction site, but Fromberg captures him. As Michael resists, Fromberg struggles to page Hayden, causing him to accidentally hit the scaffolding that drops bricks on him. This draws the attention of the patrollers, so Michael hides underneath a pile of junk. Outside, Martin arrives, mistaking a patroller for the suspect. Seeing him draw a gun, the patroller shoots him first. While the patrollers are busy with Martin's death, Michael flees, but an officer catches him. Fortunately, the officer just makes him go home, thinking that the murderer was already found. As he enters his house, Kimberly spots Michael, but he ignores her. Back in his room, he regains consciousness just as the trickster appears on the TV. The trickster congratulates him for causing the recent deaths during the game. As Michael laments his situation, the trickster warns him to get rid of the new witness during the fourth game. Michael realizes that he means Kimberly. The next day, Hayden receives a forensic report about the ashes, which shows that they contain traces of the first victim's blood. The officers also confirm that Michael made the call after Kyle's murder. Meanwhile, Michael decides to turn himself in rather than kill Kimberly. The trickster blocks him from doing so, reminding him that Kimberly snitched on him before. However, Michael insists that he loves her. Still, the trickster asserts that it's either Michael's life or hers before disappearing. Later, Kimberly goes to Michael's house, but he ignores her, still in despair of his situation. That evening, Michael plays a fourth disc and heads to Kimberly's house. He takes a pair of scissors and enters her room where she's sleeping. Unbeknownst to him, Hayden is watching outside Kimberly's house. Upstairs, Michael hesitates, so the trickster appears and urges him to kill her already. However, he can't bring himself to do it, so the trickster tries to take the scissors. Michael retaliates, questioning who the trickster really is. The trickster reveals that he's Michael, and the teen stabs him in shock. Suddenly, his guts start to consume Michael's arm, so Michael gouges his eyes to escape. This, however, leads him to getting devoured. Kimberly wakes up in fear, witnessing the trickster swallowing Michael. Suddenly, Michael appears beside Kimberly. Afraid, she confesses her love for him, pleading for her life. She reveals that she knows how Michael spies on her, sharing that she has also taken photos of him. This helps Michael regain control of himself, so the trickster leaves his body. Michael tells the creature that the game is over. However, the trickster opens the door, and Hayden enters. Accusing Michael of murder, Hayden shoots the kid in the chest. Michael wakes up in horror, confused about what happened. From the TV, he learns that the game is finished, leading him to realize that everything wasn't real. He checks out the window and sees a party at Kimberly's house, confirming that he's still on the first night he tried out brain scan. Infuriated, Michael breaks the disc for putting him through hell and trashes his room. Suddenly, Michael hears Kyle outside his house, so he goes to his friend, hugging him. Kyle tells Michael the news that brain scan caused an aneurysm to a kid who played the game. Uninterested in that, Michael instead gains the courage to ask Kimberly out. They head to the party, and while Michael goes to find Kimberly, Kyle flirts with Stacy, 
Upstairs, Michael finds Kimberly and asks her out. She reluctantly refuses, but she promises to think about it. This gives Michael hope, and as she leaves, she kisses him. Relieved, Michael checks Kimberly's table and sees a photo she took of him, confirming her affection towards him. The next day at school, Michael goes to Fromberg's office. He gives him a brain scan disc for approval for the horror club. With Fromberg unaware of what lies ahead, the trickster appears behind him, mischievously chuckling as Michael leaves. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.